Hi, my name is John. Welcome to another episode of Exile TV. In this episode, we're going to spend some time talking about the SRX line of appliances by Juniper, how they really changed the game of network design and how firewalls integrate into a network and interesting things you can do with them. And we'll have some configuration uh, lab section of this video showing some pretty detailed BGP, route redistribution, virtual routers, OSPF redistribution scenarios that you can do with these devices. So I'd like to start off first by really covering what the device is and how it's different. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Juniper has probably one of the best network operating systems in Junos. And Juniper also has one of the leading firewalls in the ScreenOS system. ScreenOS is a, from a design point of view and a usability point of view, is very similar to CAD OS. It's a flat file. And because of that, it lacks a lot of the scalability and features that you get with Junos. So, but it is really robust and the features that you have on the firewalling side are quite amazing and it scales thanks to the ASICs that Juniper uses amazingly well. It's one of the reasons why it's used in so many data centers and uh, uh, I, service provider networks is because of the scale that these boxes can go to on the higher end ISG line. It can scale quite high, higher than their competitors by far. And this is why it's really a successful, popular line of firewalls. And on the other side of the table, you have uh, Juniper's core, uh, I guess you could say the one thing they did actually invent, which is Junos and their original M-series router and, 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 the, and the, their routing product lines. And Junos is just a pleasure to work with on an OS level. It's quite amazing. And from a feature standpoint in terms of usability and, and, and service provider level features, it leaves the competition behind by far. It, 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 and its ability to uh, do all kinds of things from uh, loading configurations and having them commit at a scheduled time later uh, so that you don't have to you know, do all your configurations in the middle of the night while you're tired during your change windows. You can pre-do them during the day, schedule them to go into, in, into uh, effect uh, from its ability to roll back very easily. Uh, Cisco has like a reload in five, or reload in however many minutes you want, where if you mistype a command the box reloads. Uh, Juniper has the same thing with the commit confirm command but it's much more robust because you don't have to reboot the box it actually just rolls back the config. Juniper keeps previous config revisions and a revision control database on the box. So you can jump back to any previous revision as well as show the differences between your current configuration and your older configuration. Uh, one of the other things they have which I find is quite amazing is the ability to check out a version of, of the configuration from the database. Make all your changes to it at once. Run a check on that configuration to make sure the configuration is actually valid and then commit all the changes at once. So for instance, if you have a remote Cisco router and you want to change the ISP at a remote office, they have a PIX or a uh, small 2800 Cisco router, you really are stuck unless you have out-of-band management because you can't change the gateway or or the, inter the IP address of the interface because what happens is if you change the gateway you lose access to the box. If you change the IP address you lose access to the box. So you can never make the vice versa change that you need because you need to change the IP address and the default route or whatever route you need to change in order for that box to work. So on a Cisco box you're pretty much screwed. You can't change both at the same time. However, on the SRX boxes and most Junos boxes, you can check out the configuration, change the IP, change the gateway, commit the configuration, tell whoever's on the other end to plug it back in to the new ISP or whatever, and you're golden, which is a really nice feature. And if it doesn't work, the commit confirm feature will actually take care of that for you, which is a really nice feature. So uh, I'd like to get started with basically what we're going to talk about today, and that's designing robust, scalable partner connections for your corporation. Uh, one of the things uh, that you'll see in this graph is a classic design for a partner network. You have a core network for your company, whatever company that happens to be. You typically have a firewall of some sort, then you have a demilitarized zone uh, for your B2B partner connections. They connect to you either using frame or MPLS or VPN. It really doesn't matter. And basically, because you have to have this firewall there, you basically can't run any dynamic routing protocols through that firewall. Uh, there are solutions where, uh, say, if an ISG 1000 or a screen OS firewall, you could put in transparent mode. But if you want your typical firewall to act as a, you know, have multiple interfaces terminate the packets and re send them out another interface, 
um, basically you're very very limited most firewalls such as the checkpoint splat have really horrible implementations of routing protocols uh, if they do them at all and checkpoints one of the few that actually do do them most firewalls either don't support any kind of robust routing or they'll basically allow you to turn on rip barely or you know some basic wash down version of OSPF or something where you really can't do any real configurations so it's a big problem. The other thing is that since these features are tacked on you have a big security issue you have to worry about which can be quite an issue so typically in a situation like this you have to have routes on your core network pointing to your firewall routes on your firewall itself pointing to your demilitarized zone interfaces routes on whatever router slash switching device you have in that DMZ pointing to the individual MPLS routers to send the networks where they belong this can be quite an annoying and and uh, bad configuration really because what happens is if your partner adds a new network that's four routes you have to do four places you have to touch your network if there's a failover it's pretty much a manual failover as there's really no way to automate that type of failover and believe me I've tried we, I've set up some networks we were running IPSLA and allowing that ping to go through the firewall and doing all kinds of complicated route redistribution on the core to make up for that to fail over between devices you know between data centers and things like that you can get the solution to work but it's not a keep it simple method and it doesn't really work well in the long run the next slide I want to show you here is really the new network that you can design using uh, SRX devices and that is you replace the standard firewall with an SRX device you have all your partners BGP peer directly to you you then can do all kinds of redistribution and failover because of that and maintain a very high level of security because it is a unlike most devices that is a firewall that routes or a router that has some firewall features the SRX device is really someone designed a full-blown router and not a full-blown router with security to mind, in mind but a full-blown router with it in mind that you want to have world-class security features such as zone-based firewalls virtual routers virtual firewalls on this box so you can take each partner connection you can dedicate a port into its own virtual router which is a virtualized type of setting on this box where the routing information is stored in a separate table so they can't send a a route to you advertise a route to you that that's internal to you and cause some kind of black holing protects you from that because all your peerings with them are stored in separate routing tables and then you decide which routes you want to import from that table into your main routing table and even once they're in that table you then decide which routes you want to actually export into OSPF so it's quite an interesting uh, quite quite an interesting way of doing things and allows you to do very robust uh, very robust failover uh, and that sort of thing because you have that capability you can fail over between data centers you can fail over between sites because you have these BGP sessions at the same time you have zone based firewalling so since each interface is dedicated to a virtual router there's also a virtual firewall associated with that you create a zone for that and you've got really robust firewalling capabilities all set up so this is a really robust way of designing networks and I know I'm in the process of basically recommending every firewall that isn't an SRX device to be honest with you is pretty much replaced with one just because it's a holistic way to approach security and networking it allows you to approach security and networking as one thing and they really are one thing even though for compliance reasons we've had to separate security out from networking it's really dysfunctional to design a network where you have a separate security team and a separate networking team and things don't really work together because they never integrate well you're always fighting one another the systems just are not, are not they just don't work together that way so uh, without further ado I'd like to get into the video here part of the lab and really start explaining uh, what I want to do what I want to show you I think you'll really you'll really get a lot out of it firewall. BLT is the name of our corporation. We make delicious BLT sandwiches. We have two partners. We have Lettuce who survives, supplies us with fresh lettuce and Bacon Tomato which surprises